Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. And what is Getting Sketchy, you ask? I'm, I'm glad you asked. It's where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, who's sitting right over there, tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. Uh, and of course, we sprinkle in a little bit of instruction in there as well. So you've got drama because the clock is ticking down and you've also got art, which is, I'm sure, something that you love since you're here. And uh, it's a lot of exciting fun here. So, and a little bit of instruction too, of course, that's important as well. Um, Ashley's gonna be doing the drawing tonight and he's sitting right over there. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well, Matt. I'm doing reasonably well. I'll be honest with you guys. I've been nervous about this drawing all day. My hands are sweating. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm probably gonna drop pencils. They've been sweating all day, but I'm still excited about it. So um, we'll take a look at our reference and kind of talk our way through it before we start drawing in just a moment. And he should be nervous because this season we are doing the wheels. There's really two wheels, but it's really more fun to say the wheel. Uh, but there's two wheels. And uh, what these wheels are is, I think I might have a video. Is Yeah, there, there we go. Is. This is a couple, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we have two wheels. One wheel has the materials on it. And then the other wheel actually has the subject matter. And at the end of each broadcast here for this season, um, we roll the wheels or spin the wheels for the other participant. So tonight, Ashley will be spinning those wheels for me to see what I'll be doing for getting sketching next week. But last week, I spun the wheels for Ashley, and Ashley got colored pencils and vehicles. So yes. tonight, he's going to be doing a drawing uh, of a vehicle using colored pencils and there's a photo reference that he's going to be working from, and I have posted that photo reference over on the community tab at uh, on the YouTube channel. So you might be watching this video, but you might not be on the YouTube channel. To get to the YouTube channel, you have to click on my face underneath the video and then click on the community tab and you'll find the photo reference there. But we're gonna have the photo reference up next to the drawing tonight. So if you're just wanting to follow along and watch, of course, it's gonna be there. You can always go back to the YouTube community tab later on and find it there. And there's my boy, Slippery Wills, again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Slippery Wills, uh, for your super chat there. Um, if you wanna support us, you can definitely do that, like Slippery Wills is doing there. Uh, awesome, we really appreciate it there. Um, also, if you want to go a little bit deeper with your drawing and painting, uh, we do have a program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. Weekly uh, live lessons, so uh, this getting sketchy thing is live, obviously, but we're just doing a quick drawing here instead of 45 minutes. The live lessons are complete pieces of artwork from start to finish, and Ashley is actually leading our live lesson series right now, mm -hmm. where we're working with gouache. She's painting a still life of art materials. Uh, all of the live lessons are recorded and stored in our vault, so you can go back and watch all the live lessons we've ever done. They go all the way back to 2012. Um, also, there are weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to check out the program, there's a link in the description below. You can check that out. Everyone starts out with a week-long trial for free. Also, if you want to just check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free to get kind of a feel of what the courses are like, you can do so as well. There's a link in the description below for that as well. But right now, it is time to get sketchy. It is time. Are you ready? I, I am you... feeling sketchy. I was just checking out my materials. We're going to look at the pencils first so that you can pick out colors that are similar or the same as mine. Um, and then uh, I think I'm ready to go. Awesome. And... Um, one last thing that I was going to say, if you mm -hmm. are watching this live, there's a chat box oh, yes. that, of course, you can make comments and ask questions. I see all you guys from all over the world. A lot of support out yes, there for me today. I appreciate listen, that. It is 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we are, but I know you guys are from all over the world, and some of you guys stay up really late or get up really early to watch this show, and we really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Um, again, if you have a comment or question, that is directed at myself or Ashley. If you put it in all capital letters, that will help me see it a little bit easier tonight as the chat box gets rolling pretty quickly sometimes. And if it's all capital letters, that'll help me see it a little bit easier. It doesn't have to be about what we're talking about tonight. It can be anything art related. 
And like I said, we'll do our best to answer those questions and address those comments for you as well. All right, I'm about ready to switch over. You got the lights yep, on? Yeah, oh, I think we're ready. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at what Ashley's going to be doing tonight. All right, so I'm working in a three to four ratio, and uh, you can see the size is about five and a third inches in height, and the uh, width is four inches. So if you'd like to work in a similar picture plane, you can. You can draw any size that you'd like. Um, this isn't a very large picture plane, you can tell by the <clears throat> compared to the size of my hand, but it's plenty big for drawing in colored pencils in just 45 minutes because, you know, colored pencils, um, they work sometimes by layering, so we'll be creating some layers tonight. Now, the reference is, uh, it's complex in that it's got a lot of different shapes mm -hmm. and shiny parts, um, but it isn't an entire car. You know, I got vehicles, and uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but three seasons ago, I drew a Volkswagen Beetle, and it took me 35 minutes to draw the car, and then I had to try to shade it in in 10 minutes. So this time, yeah, it I, looked great. It, it did look great, yeah. but I just didn't have a lot of time for for value application, and tonight it's value and color. So I picked out a portion of a car uh, that I think I can draw in a much shorter period of time. There's just a few really large shapes in there so that we can spend the bulk of the uh, of our time together working with our colored pencils. So let's go ahead and take a look at those colored pencils. Yeah, I see you've got uh, the measurements. That's right. Written there. So that, we don't usually do that, but that's... I just started doing that last week. That's helpful. Just because some pe sometimes people come in a little late and they're yep. curious about the size of the paper and mm -hmm. things like that, and that may answer their question. They won't have to wait for us to respond. So um, so hopefully that'll help you guys if you want to draw on, along the same size. All right. So here's my tray of uh, tray of colored pencils that I've already selected. We're going to work with Prismacolor Premier Pencils today. So we'll go through the colors quickly and then get started. So we've got Poppy Red. I don't know if you can read that. Mm -hmm. Got a series of reds. Magenta. Terracotta. I think it's a little dark for what I consider terracotta, but it's a good color for us tonight. So it's terracotta in the Prismacolor Premier Pencils. Crimson Lake. Mm hmm that's a good one. Oh yeah, <laughs> carmine red. This I just consider carmine red a pretty good flat red. Um, I do have a blender pencil, and I'm going to use the blender to burnish these colors down and together. Um, you can do the same thing with a white pencil for most of our composition tonight. The values really aren't that dark in very many areas, so if you need to burnish your layers together, you can use a white pencil if you don't have a blender. Um, I do have Copenhagen blue out. There is a little spot of blue along the top of the headlight, and uh, it's really a cerulean blue, but we're going to make Copenhagen blue work tonight. We're also, I'm going to use the yellow ochre a little bit in our turn signal. I'm going to use black. Dun, dun, dun. I know, I know. And there's a lot of gray and black in this image, and I think it would be super fun to draw it without any grays or blacks and to use colors to create those neutrals. But this is just a sketch. It's a 45-minute sketch. So we're going to do a little less mixing um, in that I'm trying to select some colors that are pretty close to what we already see. We don't necessarily have to build up the references to find I'm sorry, build up the layers to find them. I also have cloud blue. That cloud blue looks like it's glowing, like it's on a Barbara Walters special for some reason. <laughs> do you see that? Is White that diamonds. <laughs> That's a wonderful. All right. And then I've got a series of grays that we're going to use. So I've got the 20% warm gray the 50% cool gray, and I believe the 70% warm gray. There it is. So 13 colored pencils. So no white. No white. Interesting. I'm just going to use the white of the page. Now, uh, Maria says, is that a Morgan, my favorite car ever? Maria, the fact that you know what a Morgan is, is pretty freaking cool. <laughs> This is uh, some sort of a classic BMW. Yes. From, I think, the 1930s, probably. I'm just guessing there. But uh, it's pretty cool, and I like classic cars, and I know Matt likes classic cars too. So I thought it'd be, and I like shiny things. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll, he gets shiny distracted things. by. Yeah, shiny I get distracted things. by shiny things. So I guess that's uh, He'll why try I picked to it as well. like a kitten. <laughs> All right. I also have um, a Stiedler lead holder Ooh, that I'm like going to start to. That. that I'm, I'm practicing. Yeah, that was Stiedler. Yeah, I won't even try that. Lead holder. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's got a three B lead in it. Plenty dark, but uh, we won't be. Uh, we won't be going that dark. I might need to light my lines with my eraser before we actually start with the colored pencils. And colored pencils do wear down really fast, so I'm going to be just using a regular General's uh, sharpener in the meantime to try to keep those points pretty sharp for our mark making. 
Um, we're going to have a lot of fresh mark making in here, some marks mm -hmm. that just sort of retain their initial integrity. Um, so it's going to be kind of fast and kind of loose. We're going to get down with the freshness. That's right. Get down with the freshness. Are you ready for the timer? All right. Let's or... get that. Let's bring that timer up. Are I'm you sure? Some big shapes. I think here, so. Here it comes. I think I'm ready. 45 minutes and let's go. Oh, goodness. All right. Let's see. I'm going to look for the headlight first. Just try to find some about where that sort of an oblong circle might be. It's not an exact, exactly a circle. And um, I'm not using a grid or anything like that. And we, we don't have the whole car. We don't have symmetry to deal with. So um, if our proportions or our shapes are a little bit off, um, that's all right tonight. Being that this car is sort of out of context, you know, we can't see its edges, kind of like the... Uh, Kind of like precisionism, if you're familiar with that movement in art, um, it'll be a little. We've got a little bit of flexibility there. All uh, right. Just so you know, buddy, I did see your comment. We'll miss you tonight for the live lesson. Oh no. Uh, yeah. That's all right. It's recorded. We'll miss you, but we'll be thinking about you. Yeah. It's recorded, and you'll be able to catch up tonight. Ashley's going to be painting, finishing the uh, eraser right that's right finishing the eraser and starting our background yeah. so we're moving we're pretty far into the uh pretty far into the life lesson all right i like those shapes okay we'll leave those alone now and use those to help us start the next so it looks like this this red um this big red shape if you think of it as one solid shape almost comes right out of the bottom corner on the right a numbers girl says hi from Oak Island, North Carolina. And a numbers girl, last awesome. week, the drawing I did, uh, the pastel drawing, was uh, from a beach very close to Oak Island. So you're not too far away from, from me at some times in the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we've seen, we found the headlight, and now you're finding that swooping line that kind of goes down. That's right. The I kind of like the wheel well I like there. this uh, composition for, um, in sort of an abstract way, you know, mm -hmm. taking it out of context a little bit. Not necessarily. Um, I mean, it is a car, but I just kind of like how the shapes land on the page. It's interesting because there's like several different potential focal points in there, but there's not one that really dominates. It kinda well, feel like I feel like around. my eyes move around from the two lights and then down to the tread. Yeah, it's down here, which is yeah. a which is a pattern, you know, it's, and it's very dark down here. So I feel like my eyes kind of do like this. And you've got those guiding lines that happen there back there. That right. uh, in, the opening in the engine. Yeah, yeah that, that one. That one. And then also those. Uh, Let's see. All right. That feels pretty good for the fender so far. Let's throw the signal light on top of there and see how it looks. There it is a form. It's kind of a wedge shape. What's that, Matt? Ramon says, sorry to ask. Don't be sorry to ask. But I have 12 pencil set. Can it work or not? Absolutely. Oh, you can yeah. make any, uh, any, whatever you have work. You can make it all, you can always make it work. Now, it, you, you're limited in, in what you can do, but you can make it work. There's lots of different. Your colors don't have to match the reference exactly. Yes, if your absolutely. values match, it's still going to look right. And then, of course, um, to... To capture some of the same colors that I've, you know, already started with, um, you may have to mix a couple of pencils together to find those. Do a little more color mixing. Um, yeah, and you know, there's lots of different. There's ranges of finished that you can you can have here too. So, um, like Ashley said, you can as long as you have full range of value. Uh, you're probably going to be successful. You can even work with one color, really, if you wanted to make this monochromatic or or choose two colors. Maybe do a complementary scheme. Mm, yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, my signal light might be a little bit big, but I'm just going to leave it. In the interest of time, we're going to go with it. I'm not sure that it is, but it might be. Or maybe this is small. Mess around with proportions just a little bit.
Let's see here. Edie says, I'd watch the commercials at the beginning of the show. If you didn't start before they were over, Edie, we had, we actually don't have any control over when the commercials play live or, or what, what time they, they play or how they play really. Um, that's something that YouTube does. Let's see here. We're at the mercy of YouTube mm -hmm. or you okay. guys are, I guess. Watching you from Rwanda. Wow. I don't think we've ever had anyone from Rwanda before. Interesting. Yeah, that's pretty pretty crazy. Tans Tasmania, Australia. Watch out for that devil down there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I was playing somebody in a, uh, a pickleball tournament not too long ago, and... Of course, I was the oldest guy in the tournament, and of course, um, the, the guy I was playing, he he said his his last name was Young, and I said, "Hey, nice to meet you. I'm I'm old," <laughs> and he like looked at me straight faced and said, "Real original joke, like I've never heard that before." Ooh, ouch! So I just beat him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I, you, you heard those jokes. I'm sure people like in Tasmania have heard the Tasmanian devil jokes all the time. Too, I'm sure so have to be more sensitive to that, I guess. All right. We're almost ready for colored pencils. Okay. Buddy says, I find it very difficult to get the value right just from using a color. You never know if the blue I pick up might have the same value than the red, et cetera. Any other tip than taking a photo in grayscale? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Um, instead of taking a photo, I know this might be a little bit ridiculous, but you could set up a camera and uh, have the camera on a little monitor. Uh, it's, it sounds like that would be complex to do, and it's really not that complex to do um, with an HDMI cable coming out of the camera. Then you you know, you set the camera to grayscale or you set the monitor to grayscale, and then you're only seeing the values in real time as you're choosing colors and making marks. And uh, the only reason hmm. I know about that is because that's something that we did in design school a long, long time ago in a galaxy that's a great far, trip. far uh, that's away. A great, great tip. Except our task for this one particular project was to create a color painting and then make a grayscale version of the color painting after we had made it. And then during the critique, uh, the professor held up both the paintings behind a camera, in front of a camera, that the monitor was only in black and white. So that's how we evaluated how well we matched the values. Uh, but that was many, many, many years ago. That's a pretty <laughs> great uh, way to do some sort of value training. Yes, it is. And But you can use that, that little trick uh, with your own camera and with your own little monitor. Um, and again, it sounds like it's complex, but it's really not. All right. Well, I have fussed around with the headlight shape a little bit and changed its proportion, stretched it out a little bit so it would meet up with the little uh, the um, mount that it's on where I had drawn that. So I think I'll just go ahead and find where those vents are going to be and then we'll go ahead and switch to color <laughs> pencils um all right june says try having the name june and people thinking the month of june jokes originally yeah <laughs> i bet you there's a lot of them um let's see it looks like poet says i am the devil in tasmania i like that <laughs> that's very good uh what a great comeback all right uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my eraser and just light my drawing so there's not a lot of extra graphite on the page, since I was drawn with a 3B pencil. And we're going to skip around for a while. You know, um, when, you're, when we're working under a time frame, and it could be because there's a timer on the screen, or it could be because of the sun, you know, you're drawing outside. Um, if we can switch pencils less, that'll save us a little bit of time. So I'm just going to work around with the grays for a while and then switch to the reds and kind of bounce around for probably about 20 minutes and then start burnishing it down and making adjustments after that. That's the plan. So did you, did you, you might, I may have missed this, but you explained that you erased the graphite because you didn't want the graphite yes. to be mixing with the, the colored pencils. I mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. That, that happens a lot with students. Still. Yeah. And we do have, um, you know, these are some pretty light areas, mm -hmm. so it'd be easy to get some muddy mixtures because of that. Two things that don't mix well with graphite. 
the oils of your finger and colored pencils. Yeah. <laughs> once this, once the colored pencil wax picks up, if you're using wax based crayons, mm -hmm. picks up the graphite, it kind of like gets embedded underneath a layer of the colored pencil and you, you really can't do much about it besides erasing everything that's there. It's uh, graphite's fiddly stuff with other media. All right. Uh, Catherine asked, will the tire be drawn in? And I oh, yeah. imagine that he's going to do that. Yeah, there's a there's a faint little line. It's probably hard to see there where the tire ends. It's but, right here. Yeah. But I know I haven't drawn the tread. I'm going to do some shading beforehand. There's a lot of darkness down there. Yeah, it gets really dark. We are we will be using the black pencil down there quite a bit. So we're just laying some base layers in right now. And um, since I am going to burnish this, I have to keep in mind that whatever value that I put in first um, or initially is going to look darker once it's burnished because all those little white speckles are going to disappear. And uh, even though we won't be adding any more pigment, um, the white speckles having been covered will make these areas appear darker. Now, uh, oh gosh, Edie just retracted that. Oh, no, 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 no. Edie says a family friend had neighbors with three sons named Wayne, Dwayne, and Payne. Dwayne Wayne? For real. <laughs> um, yeah. Wayne, Dwayne, and Payne. Payne? Payne. Gosh, oh. But it's spelled with an E at the end, so I okay. guess it doesn't mean like or is it P -A -Y -N -E? physical discomfort. Yeah. Like major pain, remember that? Wasn't that a movie? Yeah, it's not P. It's not like glass pain. It's P A I N E. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump into the light a little bit while we're up here, still working with a lot of grays. Well, you know, I told Ashley when we had our our first children, he didn't do this, but you know, my my name is my, Matt Fussell. My last name is Fussell, mm -hmm. and I I told Ashley that I would name my firstborn Russell. If he would name his first born, born, born first, <laughs> because his last name is Hurst. Right. So he would have had first Hurst, and I would have had Russell Fussell. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. We'll just have to have more kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's now an impossibility. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Now, in these shiny areas, um, the, the key to making them look shiny is just eventually having some pretty, I mean, there is some gradation in there, but there's also some pretty sharp and distinct um, shapes and lines. So because of the time restraint, it looks like Ashley is working quicker with the colored pencils and putting down just uh, enough color to fill the shape. Where typically, so far, if, if this so was a longer drawing, you might spend more time in each one of those shapes, layering colors and building up oh, more yeah. of a solid application. So keep that in mind. Yeah, this is uh, not really the traditional way to work with colored pencils tonight. This is a real challenge. It's a sketchy one. This is a it's pretty... That, it's that darn wheel. It doesn't seem like there's... It seems like this is a really small drawing, but for colored pencils, this is actually, for 45 minutes, this is actually kind of large. Hey, I thought about doing it three inches by oh, four inches. Oh, I think inches. you should have, yeah. Because you can like, sharpen man. a pencil. You can get in there and get those details. Yeah, but. I thought about doing it smaller. All right. So I have found some general shapes that uh, basically just try to block out what's white or almost white just so that I avoid those areas in the light. And I'm going to start with uh, light colors and then add darker colors on top, which is um, a good way to think about using colored pencils anyway. Darker colors go over light colors really well, but not so much the other way. A, a scarf and a, and a T says, my dentist when I was younger was Dr. Payne. For a dentist. Yeah. I think I would have changed my name if I was a dentist. You might lose business if you don't. I would name my. I would change my name to Doctor White, Doctor Pearly White, <laughs> um, Doctor Clean. Yeah, <laughs> well, there's already a Mister Clean. That's true. Now, um, the name of the game tonight is Simplify, Simplify, Simplify. So there are a lot of ridges in these lights, and uh, in our drawing, we just need to acknowledge that those ridges are there. We don't need to count them. They don't need to be reproduced exactly. So you're using the white of the paper in this drawing. Yes. 
Gotcha. That's why he's not using a white. I'm thinking like a little bit like a watercolorist, I guess. And like I said, we're using, you know, lines, lines, real fresh lines like this one will just remain intact. Jan says, what is a good, fun name for an artist? How about Brushes McGraphite? Um, you know, I, when I go to Starbucks sometimes, I can't remember the last time I've actually walked into a Starbucks, but, uh, I used to anyway, make up names. Um, and I would, you know, tell them fake names with a straight face. And just, then they would write it on your cup. They'd and write it on the laugh cup. And laugh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got this crazy little, little wiggly line in the light there. And then there's some really, really dark place, spaces just to the left of center. Now, remember, we will go over this with a white or a blender, and that'll help pull some of these marks together. It'll also uh, eradicate a lot of that, that texture that you're seeing. Right. Too, so. All that speckliness will eventually uh, succumb to the blender. <laughs> Andrea says, wow, that was terrible. I think she was talking about my name, Brushes McGraphite. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Shooter McGavin. Remember that? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of it's How, can, how could I forget? Now, um, what was the name of that movie, though? I do forget the name. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore, that's yeah. it. There's some quotable lines in there. Not all necessarily um, appropriate for a they're family not, show like getting this sketchy, one. Getting right, sketchy not getting appropriate. sketchy appropriate, but some really I mean, quotable lines. We're sketchy, there. but not that sketchy. <laughs> All right, there is some red, some really dark red in the reflection, or eventually will be uh, re a reflection of the car. Um, there is some areas of gradation here in this open space. Um, there's some extra shapes in there. I'm just going to kind of simplify this and just throw a gradation <laughs> over it. Sue came up with a good dentist name, Phil McCaverty. Ooh, that is yeah, that good. is good. You got to really be careful there because you want to say cavity so bad. It's cavity. <laughs> <laughs> Edie says artist name Priz McCuller. McCuller. You... <laughs> Priz. Priz, Priz McCuller. Priz McCuller. Yeah, that sounds like a. Sounds like a name that you might... I don't know. What what nationality would that name be? I'm Bries McCuller. Scottish. Of the McCuller clan. Mick Color. Mick Color. All right. Throwing some yellow ochre over the... What it will be, the light. And then I'm going to switch to terracotta <laughs> and do a little bit of uh, work with the terracotta over the yellow and the darker areas. Yeah, the terracotta is kind of a brown. Yeah, I think it's, it's more of a brown than it is the ter like the terracotta pots at my house. Like it is with many brands of colored pencils. Yeah, the, the color on the tip of the pencil is not always the color that is it's, perceived once it's applied to the surface, which is kind of odd. And there's some like ridges that. here. You don't have to count them. It's you know, not just like throw that some ridges color. in. Um, uh, there's some black in here too, so I'm going to throw a little couple black spots across the top. And uh, for clarity, if you want to throw in a few little little accents, little outline accents, we can do that. Kathleen says there's a doctor here who works just on patients' hands, and his name is Doctor Hand. His destiny was set at birth. Throw a little bit of blue over there in the chrome part of our turn signal. And maybe a couple little gray shapes. Maybe that Dr. Hand was just a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, my name is Dr. Hand. One day I'm going to grow up and be a doctor that right. works only on hands. It, Everyone from all the lands he, will call me Dr. Hand. <laughs> he uh, planned to be a hand model. But his hands were too ugly, so he fixed other people's Yeah, he was going to be Mr. Hand. Yeah. But something, <laughs> he injured his hand in a terrible paper-cutting accident. And uh, 
had to become a doctor. Switching to magenta. And, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of reflection in here. I'm just going to try to discover it um, with some really light, you know, the shapes, I mean, the shapes of the dark reflections with some light lines made by my magenta pencil. Uh, the reflections aren't the same every day on the car. They change every day on the car. So just keep that in mind. Don't be too tight with your reflections. Just try to generally get this, those uh, reflected shapes in there. All right. Slippy Wheels has a great question. Is All there right. a big difference between Prismacolor and Polychromos colored pencils? Glad you asked that question because, yes, there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, Prismacolor Premier colored pencils are wax-based, and Polychromos colored pencils are are oil-based, so they behave slightly different. A lot of the same techniques we use with colored pencils overlap between the two, but the burnishing is a little bit different. Um, I've noticed that the Prismacolors are really at their best when they're applied heavily and cover almost like paint. So mm -hmm. you can, uh, once you've got a lot of the material on the surface, the surface almost, it feels very waxy. You actually move the, the, the material around, the color around, almost like miniature oil pastels. Polychromos colored pencils are a little bit different. They layer nicely, but uh, they seem a little bit harder to me. So they're better suited for lots and lots of layers and just layering and layering and layering. And you can layer with light to medium applications and still get really good results with polychromos pencils. But there is a course um, it called Three Little Birds with Colored Pencils. And in that course, I use three different brands of colored pencils on three different surfaces. The first drawing I do of a bird, obviously all, all of the drawings uh, are on, of birds. Uh, that's the name of the course. But um, the first drawing I do is with Prismacolor Premier pencils. And the second drawing I do is actually with Polychromos pencils. So if you really want to see a, a clear comparison, you might want to check out that course. And that's, that's part of the program over at thevirtualinstructor.com. Uh, let's see. All right. I had used some magenta because of the cool red and the reflection, um, right through here. And now I'm working the carmine red, um, into it. There is the, there are these, uh, reflections of clouds in the paint. So that's what that funky shape is supposed to be or will become. Okay. Edie's asking, is that a brown pencil for the lens on the fender, please? Here, yeah, um, I used yellow ochre and terracotta. Yeah, when the, their terracotta is brown. It's more of a brown orange than it is sort of a what I would think of as a orange. And that mix of those two colors is definitely translating somewhat as a brown. Yeah, I think so. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the, the yellow underneath it's really warming it up. I think. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to switch over to Crimson Lake for a little bit. Start looking for some of the darker areas in the fender. Okay, um, Kathleen asks, can you use both Prismacolor pencils and Plasmacolored pencils on the same drawing? I'm not really sure what Plasmacolored pencils are. I, uh, I you, picked up the magenta, by the way. You can use oil-based and wax-based pencils in the same drawing for sure. But Plasmacolored pencils, I'm not real sure if that's a different brand name or if that's a different type of colored pencils or if you meant to say polychromos i bet you meant to say colored polychromos and if that's the case yeah you can use them interchangeably in fact i used wax based colored pencils i used lemon luminance pencils and uh, polychromos pencils in one of the recent courses i did um called let's see what is it what's the name of the course um i draw a spider on polyester film um, in that course. Oh, yeah. And um, I think it's Pencils on Polyester is the name of the course. That's what it is. I, I, you know those moments when you draw an absolute blank? <laughs> the name of the course is those all the time. Pencils in, on Polyester, and I use both wax-based and oil-based pencils on that polyester film. Uh, but, yeah, you can definitely use those together. Uh, Hen Henrique says, uh, can I use pastel pencils and get a similar drawing? It's going to be a little bit different because you're using pastel pencils. Pastel pencils are different from colored pencils because they're made of pastels and uh, colored pencils are either wax based or oil based. Most of the pencils that you, most of the colored pencils that you encounter are wax based, but uh, obviously there are a few exceptions. 
Um, the pastel pencils are going to, they're going to behave differently. They're definitely going to be pa more powdery and pastel pencils have the ability to cover over completely what you already have on the surface. You it's can true. adjust your pressure and get kind of a little bit of that color showing through a little bit, but for the most part, pastel pencils are going to mix like pastels where with colored pencils, you can layer applications and some of the color underneath is going to affect the color that you see on the top so it's not going to be exactly the same nor will you be picking up that much texture the colored pencils as you can see the texture of the paper is really evident at this point with uh, pastel pencils they're going to fall right into that tooth or texture of the paper and uh, fill them up a little bit more completely so you won't have that textured grainier look i am looking forward to burnishing all this down we're getting closer. We've got a few more spots to visit. I think we're doing okay on time. Been working with pretty much those uh, all four reds in here. And of course, um, we can use the, the blending tool to sort of push this around a little bit, create some fogginess. Uh, between some of these shapes but oops wrong pencil i do want to keep you know in the reflected areas i just want to keep seeing shapes distinct shapes of what's being reflected okay jen says ashley that is looking great already oh thank and you jim. jerry says she's watching from poff town oh now isn't it interesting i knew that that was pronounced poff town and not Fof not poff town poff town poff town well <laughs> let that be a lesson to all of us <laughs> That's a tough. That's a tough one. Oh, <laughs> Slippy Will's giving out a shout out to Maki. She helped me a lot in the last weeks. Yeah, Maki's got some wonderful pen and ink drawings that she posts frequently over on the forum at the Virtual Instructor, and awesome. she's also um, submitted quite a bit of artwork for Critique too. So a lot of her critiques are featured as part of the members' minute too. And thanks again for that super chat. Slippy wheels. We really appreciate it. It's very we, motivating. We really need to have like some kind of sound or something. We, that we said that we last. Say, time we say that every we week. Still don't. So yeah, that's. I'm gonna have to figure We've out. We've got some how homework. That. We've got some homework. To do. Have to, I've got to to do some tech investigation there on that one. <laughs> um, let's see. Tom says, "I'm so glad one of you got colored pencils. This is amazing." Uh, <laughs> Woo! I. Uh, I don't know I if I share that idea sentiment for the colored pencils people whoop. combination. Yeah. And so I kind of have my fingers crossed that, that I will get that one. Yeah. Um, but it, it won't happen because I want it. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, this funky stand that our, um, that our, uh, headlight is on has a lot of grays in it. And I'm going to think like a watercolor and put the lightest gray down first and then switch to a slightly darker gray and avoid all of the areas that appear to be light and, uh, and fill in everything that is sort of a medium gray or black. And then we'll go over that with some black. So we're thinking in, you know, one value at a time, layering them on top of each other from dark, uh, light to dark. I'm sorry. From light to dark. All right. Buddy says, I thought burnishing is only efficient once there is almost no tooth left. Am I wrong? Um, you can, when you burnish, uh, and when we're, when we're using the term burnish, we're actually talking about just using some material that could be uh, the colorless blender. It could be a white colored pencil. It could be some type of solvent to basically uh, move the colored pencil material into the tooth of the paper so that it has a smoother appearance. So burnishing can also mean rubbing with heavy pressure too. Right. And like in, uh, in printmaking. And like in printmaking. Yeah. Um, so the, when we say burnishing, we're basically talking about flattening the colored pencils. Now the tooth might be flattened in the process as well. So some people refer to burnishing, like I said, as putting heavy pressure on the colored pencil. Um, but the, the type of burnishing that Ashley's referring to is basically working the material into the tooth. And there's going to be some uh, mixing that occurs too, especially if he's using the colorless blender to do so. So you're going to see that really clearly in that, uh, that amber 
reflector or turn signal on mm -hmm. the top there yeah um, because he's used several different colors in that area so when he burnishes that area with the colorless blender those colors are going to mix together and they're going to look quite a bit different than they mm -hmm. do now actually amanda says just make a sound yeah <laughs> boop boop that, there you go. that's not an appropriate sound <laughs> that doesn't go at all <laughs> um all right so it's pretty dark under the fender i've got on um, black about two-thirds of the way over towards the towards the left and i'm going to switch to one of my grays let's try the 50 percent cool gray hey uh matthew russell says looking amazing ashley matthew russell you are one letter away from being me <laughs> or maybe i'm one letter away from being you thank you matthew dun 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 A numbers girl says that she is she lived in Poff Town. Oh yeah, and she says I miss that area, especially Hero House. Yeah, I, I've never it's been. Funny, to Hero my House. kids ate at Hero House just last week, and I didn't, and I was a little jealous. <laughs> All right, so I've shaded this area um, before we actually put the treads in. You know, I'm just trying to trying to think from broad, uh, you know, broad to specific, and so value over, you know, texture, value over pattern. All right, I'm gonna get up into here a little bit, this, uh, this business, and then it'll be time to burnish it some, and then go back in after we see what happens to it. Got a couple of good questions now, here. I'm gonna turn my paper sideways for this, because I need to make a lot of straight lines that are parallel to one another. Okay, we'll just all turn our head sideways. Well, you there turned we it go. the wrong way. I turned my head to the right. Sorry, if I hurt your head. <clears throat> um, Andrea says, once burnished, will you be able to see any of the tooth of the paper? Not really. Well, very in, little. I think in your case, you'll still be able to, just because maybe. there's not a lot of colored mater pencil material on the yeah, surface. Yeah, maybe a little bit. There'll be there'll be little white specks showing through in places, but but typically, few. not that much. Uh, now, um, again, I'm not counting these vents. Uh, if I were going to make a longer drawing, I probably would. You know, I'm probably trying to capture all of these details, but um, this is more about we're, we're just trying to make some fresh marks lines and shapes and see if they translate as this part of an automobile in the mind's eye all right now um below these lines or these lines are like the shadows underneath each of the ridges there are all those tiny tiny little holes and they're you know like little rectangles almost but um we're just going to put a series of marks below each one of these leaving a gap and uh, and see how that translates near the end um and Edie says is there a difference in effect between using a colorless burnisher and a stump i i think so because the colorless burnisher has is made of wax you know so um it's adding and adding additional material just not additional color to the paper whereas the stump you know it's just trying to take the material that's already on the page and spread it out yeah, and the stump's not going to move this colored pencil material very much at all. Mm -mm. Uh, a scarf and tea says, instead right. of a sound, we should get Matt's Kermit impression. <laughs> Hi-ho, thank you, Slippery Wheels. <laughs> uh, Kermit the Frog sounds like he might be uh, having a voice change. Might be that at time <laughs> there's more where that came from no there's not that was terrible <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible car oh problem. gosh i've forgotten the red stripe up here all right we're going sideways again folks going sideways again here we go you know i find making really straight lines or pretty straight lines easier if i make them towards myself so that's why the change now i can switch back and go with uh red from there i believe moving to i'm gonna grab the crimson lake put another stripe margaret says i would like to cheer you guys on for doing this in spite of feeling unsettled before the show thanks margaret thank you yeah we, you know it is nerve-wracking 
So we appreciate you recognizing that. Yeah, and I'm, a, you know, and I, I teach uh, during the regular school year, and so usually on Wednesdays, my mind is occupied with all the things that I have going on with with school and work and my own students. But during the summertime, I think about this drawing all day long, <laughs> and it just it just continuously builds up the suspense, and uh, and I think that's what um, that's why I get a little nervous. Because I think about it too much. Maybe that happens to you guys sometimes. Overthinking it, right? All right, let's go ahead and break out the blender for a little while and see what happens. We've got 10 minutes left almost exactly. So I've got my uh, Dick Blick blender. Um, but like I said, you can probably use a white. Um, in a lot of places, you know, I try to keep my strokes together. So there's not a lot of white gaps between my strokes. But if you do know which direction your strokes are, or if you can, especially if you can see them, if they're apparent, then um, working crossways or in a cross contour fashion or something close to it can uh, further help to smooth out your material. And you can see how it's getting darker compared to where I haven't been yet. So, got to kind of plan for that. Keep that in mind. If that you, blender is taking the material and moving it into the little crevices mm -hmm. of the tooth that you that you can't see any longer. Um, little and, microscopic speckles. Paintbrush asked you like to use pencil solvent. I know many artists don't like it, but some really do. Really like how this is coming out. Like for color pencils, you mean? Yeah. Like uh, mm -hmm. like mineral spirits or something like that. Yeah. I, I like never it. do. I never do. Some of the other teachers I work with and some of the students, some of my own students, um, they, they like to use solvents with their color pencils. I typically will only use solvent to do what Ashley see you're doing with the colorless blender when I have a large area to cover and um, stick with the colorless blender for the other area. So I, I usually don't have large areas to do it. So I rarely use that, but I, I have been known to use it before, but only really for larger areas. Uh, Sue uh, needs a recap on what paper he's using. He's oh, using I'm sorry. 70 pound white sulfate drawing paper. Mm -hmm. It's Windsor Newton brand uh, and it is medium grain, medium grain. Uh, Edie says, is there something you guys like most about teaching, please? Um, I, I enjoy watching students' drawings get better. I mean, it's, it's exciting to see their skill develop. You know, their ideas, too. You know, I like to work with them. I uh, have some advanced classes where they're really it's more about their concept and learning to communicate that. Um, but I especially like to work with the younger students who are just developing their, their skills of observation. Um, I, you know, I teach in a different way now, but really what I like about teaching hasn't really changed. I kind of view, um, art as basically just the avenue that I get to have a connection with people. And I like making an impact in people's lives as a whole, not just, um, not just through art, but, uh, you know, I, I hope that once something that I say or something that I do um, influences those people so that it changes their life for the better. And when I had students, physical students in class, I could see that actually happen. Right. Um, now, all, all of my students are online, obviously, so it's a little bit different. But some of the same things I did in my classroom, I still do on the website. Like mm, that's my, true. Um, my quotes each week, which we were talking about the quote before yeah. this week's quote, uh, the quotes I do for the members minute, I would have a quote of the week in my classroom every week with my students. And I would read the quote and then we would spend Monday morning talking about that quote um, and trying to learn from it so that it would change our lives for the better. And uh, that's what I love about teaching. And I love art and that's just my avenue to get to, to uh, interact with people. So uh, that's what I love most. Great question, by the way. Mm -hmm. But he says, wow, Ashley, the blending looks so great. And Slippy Wills again with another super chat. Oh. Thank you so much, All Slippy right. Wills. Make the sound. Make the sound. Uh, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have a sound. <laughs> but I like putting Matt on the spot to make one, so. 
<laughs> um, Enrique asked, do you have drawing courses for children? No, no, I don't. But uh, possibly in the future. I, creating drawing yeah. courses and painting courses for adults <laughs> really takes a lot of time. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to do some, some stuff for some, for smaller children. I mean, there are some great YouTube channels that are out there for children. Um, I'm thinking of what's the one I'm thinking of art, art hub. I think it art uh, hub for kids. Yeah. Art hub I, think for kids. I think that's it. Uh, that is great for kids. I think the dad draws with the, the son and maybe a daughter sometimes. Um, and it is a great channel. My, my children watch that channel from time to time. Um, it is great for younger kids. It, you're not going to necessarily get the elements and principles and all those kind of things in there, but when you're young, they're in there. They're just not explained in that way. I'm sure he's still right. working well, with shapes and lines. Yeah, shapes and lines. But art at that age should be nothing but fun. There should yeah. be no pressure. It should be really, really fun, and they make it really, really fun. All right. Yeah, a, a numbers girl says, "Have missed seeing you guys. Been a while since getting a notification from YouTube." Oh, that's interesting. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I, you know, you know, YouTube does what it well, wants. Well, we'll just march ourselves so, right down there <laughs> and talk it out. Amanda suggests let's make arts. Not, I haven't heard of that before, but I'm trying to use the blender to make the edges of some of these shapes kind of soft, where they're supposed to be clouds. The, uh, I can hear the clock ticking in my head. Some of these white areas, I can just kind of lightly hit with a blender and uh, and carry some of the medium or some of the material up into them, like there. Well, just remember that the clock is indeed a suggestion. That's right. It's a target. It's a strong suggestion. <laughs> suggestion. And we've got a couple of clocks, you know, because we oh. do have another show. Right after this one. So there is an ultimate clock, but three minutes and 34 seconds. All right. Dadurhi, I'm not sure if I'm saying your, your name right or not. Dadurhi says, you are missing the blue on the headlights. Oh, you're right. That's a good spot right oh, there. Oh, you're right. And I even because talked that about blue it before makes I a started. Difference. Yeah, that Copenhagen blue. We have to start over. <laughs> <laughs> ball it up reset the ball timer it up. right You've got if i was in class if seconds. i was in my own class right now as a student i would ball it up and throw it in the trash can jan jan makes an obvious statement here i almost get the impression colored pencil is a slow medium yes <laughs> yeah, it is that's why we were talking about it being on the wheel that's why, I've been, so that's why i've been upset all day <laughs> all day it is a slow medium ashley is using it in a very sketchy manner keep that in mind oh um, yeah but uh, yeah, it's it's a medium that requires multiple passes usually, and usually when you're creating a colored pencil drawing, you're not just putting one application of color. You, you're usually putting three or four, right. then burnishing so, in between. So you know, I would think of if I were going to make this drawing and spend a lot more time on it, and it were five inches tall, it would feel like a twenty-inch tall graphite drawing because I'm probably going to have to go over all of it at least four times with different colors to get those different uh, mixtures. So, let's see if we can dig out a little bit of space up here for some blue. Buddy has just put every single emoji possible for someone laughing until they're crying. <laughs> every single one of them. Two lines. Amanda says, Ashley is sketchy, dude. LOL. <laughs> yeah, you don't know, Amanda. Oh, yeah. I know how sketchy he is. But I'm pretty sketchy. Too. I wish I had access to my um, electric eraser right now. Hey, you have access to mine. Where Just is it? Open that drawer and look in the eraser section. It should be on the right. Halfway up. You see it? Oh, goodness. Yep. I'm just Where's gonna, that Dr. Payne? That I'm just going to dig a the hole through office. the paper and then put some blue on the page below it. Mm, girl, just, just going to put a little bit of uh, we're going to put a little Novocaine in there. there okay. Just keep your mouth mm -hmm. open like that. Okay, this is Dr. Payne. I'm going to be uh, leaving your bill at the front desk there. All right, I'm going to throw a little blue up there, even though it's not in the right exactly the right place. It's going to have to. It's going to have to 
suffice. Okay, now let's see. We've still got to put some tread down. I think the reflection looks really good there. And I also like the uh, the amber light there. That's that uh, is translating really nicely after that. Thank you. Uh, after the burnishing. Yeah, and you can still see there is quite a bit of you know white speckles showing through. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but even with that one pass with the blendings with the blending tool, blending pencil, it uh, still feels a lot more solid than it did initially. Slippy Wheels has done it again. Another super chat. You're killing us here. We we have so appreciate it. It's time for the sound. Boop boop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Um, he says thanks for a great show, guys. Ash, it looks great. Guys, thank check you. out the site. Thank you for it's your so support. Yeah, thanks so much for that too, uh, Slippy Wheels. And uh, let's see, buddy. I don't know how to do this drawing while watching you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can do both at the same time. Look at the tread. What a difference the tread made. Boom. The tread w it weights it. You know, it holds it, holds, anchors it down here. So we've got a couple places of pattern. Well, time's up. There's uh, a lot more to do. There could be a lot more to do, but I'm not, I'm not disappointed with it. I don't think I'm disappointed with it. I'd like to get darker in a few areas. I think I could probably... Probably I'll work on this one about another 45 minutes or so, even from the state that it's in right now. But, uh, you know, sometimes we don't have all day or sometimes we're racing against, like I said, the sun um, <laughs> drawn outside. And we just have to capture as much visual information as we can in a given amount of time. And so time drawings are a great exercise to practice doing that. Okay. Amanda says we need a, a sound. And then she does a super chat. Thanks so much. A numbers girl. Boop, All boop. right. Great job, Ashley. Thank you. Fun Thank live stream you. tonight. She says, Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You guys uh, are great. Thanks for all your support and kind words. I couldn't have uh, couldn't have made it through this one without you. You know what? I think the tire tread made this drawing make sense. Without it, you may not without even know it's it, a car. It, it was kind of <laughs> difficult. It seemed abstract. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we know what it is, but then when you put the tire tread in there, it tied everything together. It's kind of amazing the way that little bit of detail made such a huge difference. There. I like how we can't see the edge of the tire. You know, yeah, it kind of I fades. could barely in the reference, but I like it just kind of fading away. Yeah, it looks kind more of, natural. Kind of pulls yeah. it all together, right? We can't always. Titian is a great artist to look at. Um, he was, I think, painted in Southern Italy, maybe, but uh, he was a great artist to look at for soft edges or edges that just aren't there at all. And uh, whether purposely or not, you have a nice primary color scheme going on there. Since we got a slight, yes. slight little bit of blue, and there yep. we do. Right, that blue, blue is necessary. Yellow, red, yeah, yep. all brings it made it a big together. difference because mm -hmm. uh, now we've got kind of all four corners in quotations of the color wheel. Yeah, there. Uh, all right, Jennifer says fantastic draw drawing. Wow, we good job, Ashley. Uh, Thank you so, so much. So impressive for only 45 minutes. I like that the tread in the drawing is easier to see. Great work, Ashley. Mm -hmm. What about a beep beep roadrunner? You know, I've got some ideas, guys, for some things Maybe. I might could do here. Um, I'm just going to have to do a little bit of research. But next week, I'll do my best to have some kind of sound, some kind of sound slash graphic. A that word. Oh yes. When we have a super chat. Oh yes. Now people are figuring out how to do the super it's chat. It's got to be a graphic. Now listen. If I knew how to, t if I knew how you were doing the super chat, I would tell you. I would encourage you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, I don't know how you're doing it. That <laughs> sounds terrible. I have built two computers that that we use. Oh I, my goodness. I program and code. Uh, the website, and I cannot, I don't know how you guys are doing this, <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it. It's beyond Matt, uh, it's beyond his, uh, his technical expertise. <laughs> but we'll figure I just out. just know how to push buttons. Um, so thank you guys. Thanks so much. And Ashley's putting his signature border on there. That makes uh, a difference. There we go. Yeah. It was because it it's, cause it's so light up there. Mm -hmm. You know, contrast. the values were so light. I needed yep. a border up top. I was getting lost up yep. there. 
All right. Well, um, if you're done, we'll switch yeah, back I think over I'm, here. I think I'm then. done. I think I'm good. Well, uh, this brushes McGraphite. Definitely enjoyed watching <laughs> that happen. I uh, hope you guys did too. Um, Ashley's got just a few sweat beads on his head there. <laughs> I checked my hands. I, I've dried them off. Now, Didn't drop any pencils, so it went better than I expected. There's something really important we forgot. Oh, the wheel. The wheel. Oh, my gosh. So we're going to go back to the board over here, and uh, Ashley's going to spin, mm -hmm. spin, not spend. He's going to spin uh, the material wheel and the subject wheel. The wheels of possibility. And I'll keep my fingers crossed for portraits with, or people with uh, with colored pencil. So let's people see. with colored pencil. Let's see what happens there. Okay, oh, well, oh, we got, got stuff up here. Got a room of a reference. Let's hide this junk. There, there we, we go. go. And we're zoomed in way too close. In, but as long as we can see our red indicator. Oh no, I'll I'll fix it here. Okay. Well, in any case, um, once once one of the possibilities has been landed on twice in the season, we mark it out. That way, we don't end up working with the same materials at the same subjects throughout the season. There we are. Thanks, Matt. So uh, I don't believe there's any materials that we've used twice so far. So any of these are up for, are an option. Any of these are a possibility. You ready? I'm ready. Give me a good spin here. All right. And, and it is... 65 cents. Mixed no, media. Mixed media. Again, I've already had mixed media. So that's so going to be, the, that'll be, gonna the be end in for mixed, mixed media, media this it's, season. It's its last, uh, uh, last so week. So I'll next be week. using mixed media. Which so I will not have to do mixed media this season, apparently, since you, you're taking both you of those. You won't. No. All right. <laughs> now, um, the subject of possibilities has one less option because if you tuned in the last uh, couple of weeks we've already done some landscapes we've done two landscapes, two landscapes. that's why it has the big red x that's on right it. so that's no longer allowed um, but yeah. vehicles is still in there since we've only done that once so far and that was tonight right. so here we go oh let's go here mm. we gotta get dun, 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 dun. it's the wicked witch of the west oh, oh no. it really that Have weight, you got I a put weight on under there. here yeah, yeah that weight i put on there it's really just, is working what's going on yeah it's really working i All just right, need let's... to take that thing to vegas <laughs> here we uh, go buddy says where'd you get this wheel well i ordered the wheel but i, I made swear. the rest of it there is something up with that <laughs> turn it Turn it further. Turn it further. Now I'm going to turn it. it clockwise this now, time. Okay. All right. Now let's see here. Right, this is a slower spin, off. but Note clockwise. To self, take weight off of back of wheel. Still life. Okay. Mixed All right. Media, mixed still media, life. still life. Interesting. Awesome. Now I'm a big fan of mixed still life. Mixed media, still life. I'll be glad life. to see what you choose to do. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, well, there we, we have don't it. know what materials we'll be working with. So bring everything you've got. Yeah, and, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. I will uh, when I when I post. The uh, image that we're going to be working from, I will also list the materials there too. Um, okay, so that'll give us some time to rep to prepare. Yes, definitely. Right, awesome. So, um, so that'll be next week. I'll be doing a still life with mixed media. What media will I mix? Who knows? Um, <laughs> I, what I'll do is I'll first find the subject matter and. Uh, boy, still life is wide open. So uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I will stay away from the typical fruit and vegetable and go with something else. Um, but that what we'll, that's what we'll do next week for Getting Sketchy. Guys, thanks for sticking around tonight. Ashley did a great job. Thank uh, you. Do you have anything else to say to the folks out um, there? Once again, uh, thanks for your support. I love drawing vehicles. I'm always nervous about colored pencil. I think it went um, well for 45 minutes. And I'll be glad to uh, put the pressure back on the mat next week and see what he does. Yes, absolutely. Um, guys, have a wonderful week. Uh, we're going to head over to thevirtualinstructor.com right now. And if you're a member, hopefully you'll join us over there as Ashley continues to paint very slowly with gouache <laughs> um, as that still life develops. And it's looking fantastic. We'll have to show everybody so, maybe next week how it comes out so they yeah. get a better idea of what to expect from the live lessons. Right. But you won't be finished with it next week. No, no. No, no, no. So uh, we still got uh, a little while to go there. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Uh, but if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that like button if you enjoyed this video. That'll help other people find this video, and they can benefit from it too. All right. Good night, everybody.